Hey, what's up? Sean here, and I just made my own Moon Knight mask from the Moon Knight series on Disney Plus with eyes that can light up. Can you actually see through the mask? Yep, you can still kind of see through this mask even while the lights are turned on. In this video, I'll show you how I did all of this, and if you're interested in making your own Moon Knight mask, then maybe this video can give you some ideas. Wow, I wish I could make my own Moon Knight mask, but I'm just not as talented as you. Don't worry, that's why I made a free downloadable template which you can find in the description box of this video. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to properly print out this template so that you're able to get a custom fit for your head size. After you print the template, you'll need to trim off off these borders here so that you can actually connect all the pages together like a puzzle. So just take a knife and a ruler and slice all those edges off and after you've done that all the pages should line up together perfectly like this. Now I'm going to transfer this template onto some dollar store poster board. Since there's only three pieces in this template, the template pieces are quite big so you'll probably need multiple sheets of poster board to get the pieces to fit. For me, I used two sheets of poster board but you may need to use more depending on how big or small your sheets are. After that, I gave the glue a moment to dry and then I cut out all the pieces using a sharp knife, but you could also use scissors here if you prefer. In total, there should be three pieces in this template as you can see here. Now you'll notice that all the pieces have lines on them which tell you where you need to fold and there's two different types of fold lines. The dashed lines represent mountain folds while valley folds are represented by dashed and dotted lines. So just take a ballpoint pen and trace all the fold lines, making sure to press down with a good amount of pressure in order to make a crease in the cardboard like this. It's best if you have two different colored pens, that way you can easily differentiate between mountain folds and valley folds. I marked all the mountain folds using a red pen and all the valley folds using a black pen, and now we're ready to assemble this template together. If you look closely, you'll see that most of the edges are labeled with these numbers here, and those numbers just help you identify two corresponding edges that should be glued together. So just match each edge that has a number with another edge that has the same number, and as long as you pay attention to these numbers, it's pretty straightforward. Forward. The easiest way to assemble the template, I find, is just to tape the whole thing together first and then flip it over and super glue everything in place. The tape just helps make this process so much easier and probably faster too. As you'll see, there's a mirrored version of this piece right here, and at this point you can just simply combine these two halves together like I've done here. And now we're basically almost done putting together the template. We just have one more piece, which is this one right here. I followed the exact same process as before, and then I combined these two sections together like this this and now the template is fully assembled and we can move on to the next step. The next step is to harden the paper, so for that I'm going to use Bondo Fiberglass Resin. I found this product in the automotive section at my local Walmart, but I'll leave an Amazon link below in case you want to buy this online. I followed the instructions which said to add 10 drops of hardener for every 30 milliliters of resin, and then I applied this stuff all over the inside and outside of the mask. While that was curing, I went ahead and cut up a whole bunch of strips of fiberglass cloth. This product was also in the automotive section at my Walmart, and again I'll leave a link below in case you want to check that out. I cut out various different sizes of strips, some bigger, some smaller, and this cloth is going to get added to the inside of the mask along with more fiberglass resin. What I'm doing here is just laying down the cloth and then saturating it in fiberglass resin, and once this cures, it becomes very solid. By the way, make sure you use a respirator and work in a well-ventilated area when working with resin. Also, it's worth mentioning that your resin won't cure if the environment isn't warm enough, so if you're in a bit of a cooler temperature, try placing the mask near a portable heater. At this point I used a Dremel and a cutoff wheel attachment to cut open this back plate so that I could actually slide the mask over my head. I also went ahead and cut off any little pointy bits and sanded those smooth so that they wouldn't cause any discomfort. The next thing I'm going to do is add some neodymium magnets in order to make the back plate be able to snap on and off. So here I'm just super gluing on some 6x3 neodymium magnets and if you want you can also sprinkle on some baking soda while the super glue is still wet and that will make the glue dry almost instantly and also create a stronger bond too. Here's how the magnets are going to interact. It's pretty straightforward. I put four magnets on each side and that did the trick. To smooth out the eye holes, I used a mini needle file and sanded until I was happy with the shape of the eyes. You can also use sandpaper for this if you don't have a little needle file. Now we're ready for epoxy sculpt. If you watched my last video, then you might have seen me use this stuff. I really, really like it. It's super versatile and so durable when it cures. In case you're not familiar with epoxy sculpt, it's like a two part self hardening clay. Basically, once you mix equal parts of part A and part B, the clay will begin curing and you'll have about three hours of working time. 
This clay works really well in combination with a little bit of water to help smooth it out and make sculpting easier. The purpose of using this clay is to smooth out the area of the face that will be showing through the bandages and also to create a bit of a brow line which will sort of give the face more of an expression and make it look more lifelike. If you don't have epoxy sculpt, I'm sure you can find another way around this using the materials you have around you. So you might need to get a bit creative for this part, but I'm sure you can get similar results using other methods. After I was happy with what I had sculpted, I started sketching the bandages onto the mask, which made it a lot easier for me to sort of visualize where to put the bandages and what order to glue them in. Once all the lines were sketched, I used that as a reference to cut all the bandages out of craft foam. Before we go any further, this video is sponsored by... Hey man, can you keep it down? I'm trying to make a YouTube video here. Oh, sorry. I'm just opening a package from Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post? <laughs> What's that? I'm so glad you asked. Bespoke Post is a subscription service that delivers you monthly boxes full of cool products from under the radar brands. What? Isn't that just a waste of money? Great question. Well, here's how it works. First, you fill out a preference quiz and Bespoke Post will curate boxes tailored towards your interests. Every month, they'll assign you a new box with about $70 worth of retail value, but you only pay $49. So to answer your question, Bespoke Post actually kind of saves you money by offering products at a discount. Fair enough, but what if I don't even like the products? Oh, don't worry, you can actually preview what's inside each box before it's shipped. And if you don't like it, simply swap it for a different box or just skip that month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you actually want. Personally, I got the Weekender bag, a carry-all perfect for a weekend getaway. The Snap box, which has a portable waterproof Bluetooth speaker, and the Hibernate box, which comes with ultra comfy slippers to wind down the day. All perfect for my upcoming summer trip. I love that 90% of these products are sourced from small businesses. I didn't ask. If you want 20% off off your first order, just click the first link in the description and enter Sean's Crafts 20 at checkout, or just go to bespokepost.com slash Sean's Crafts 20. Once I had cut out all the craft foam pieces, I glued them onto the mask one by one using a bit of super glue. By the way, if you're still here watching this video and you're enjoying it, please consider hitting the thumbs up button because that tells YouTube that you like this video and that YouTube should show this video to more people, which helps keep my channel going, so thank you. And the last strip of foam and now we're ready to prime the foam with some Plasti Dip. I did two thick coats of Plasti Dip but if you don't have Plasti Dip, alternatively you could just coat the foam in a couple layers of Mod Podge and you'll be just fine. After the Plasti Dip dried, I coated the entire mask with some Rust-Oleum white spray paint. Now simply take a sharp blade and start adding streaks all over the mask as shown here. Ideally you want to have used black craft foam as opposed to any other color because once you start slicing up the foam the color of craft foam you used will start to show through and obviously you don't want some random color like yellow showing through so I say try to use black craft foam if you can. Next, I'll weather the mask using some watered down black paint. I tried to keep most of the black paint in the cracks and crevices where dirt and grime would naturally build up and that gives off a more realistic look I think. I let everything dry for a little bit and then I coated the entire mask in some matte Mod Podge.
for the glowing eyes effect, I found these LEDs on Amazon, which are really convenient. It's powered by two AA batteries, and the eyepieces themselves are flexible, which makes the installation process super easy. The visibility in these is decent. You can still see quite a bit through the eyes if you're in a place with bright lighting, but if you're in a darker setting with like less light, then you basically can't see anything. I'll leave a link below to the exact one that I bought on Amazon. I added a little magnet to the battery pack, same magnets we used earlier, and that way I could replace the batteries when they die. And I positioned the battery pack at the top of the head because the mask was a little tall for my head anyway, so the battery pack just kind of helps offset my head a bit so that my eyes line up with the eye holes of the mask. Finally, I added some elastic bands to keep the backplate from falling off, and then I was finished. As promised, I'm now going to show you how to properly print out the template. So first, you need to download Adobe Acrobat Reader. There's a link in the description to where you can download this. It's free and takes like two minutes. After you've downloaded the template, right click on the file and then open with Adobe Acrobat Reader DC. Click the printer icon, select the poster format, then set the overlap to zero. And right here where it says tile scale is where you're going to adjust the size of the mask. So just take the width of your head, divide that by 160 and multiply that by 100. And whatever you get is what you're going to input as the tile scale. By the way, when I say width, I mean width, not circumference, because I know that's caused some confusion in the past. After you've inputted the tile scale, just specify what type of paper you're using and now you're ready to print. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll probably also like my Spider-Man mask too, so click the screen right here if you want to watch that video. Thank you very much to my patrons for supporting me on Patreon, and thank you for watching.